And there is the handoff right up the gut to Isaac Brost. A solid run to around the 39-yard line. Before the tackle was made by Abel Haro, the 6'2", 247-pound senior. It's a gain of four. Second down and six. The handoff to the deep back booth running off right guard. He's got a yard to the 40, and that's it. As Platte Valley with some excellent penetration bringing him down. It's only a gain of one and setting up a third down. And five as the tackle was made over there by Chad Foose, the senior at 5'11", 182. And on third and five, Maltos with a handoff right up. They've got a big hole and a first down for Skyler Seawald as he's tripped up in Platte Valley territory at the 49-yard line. Preston Carr might have made a touchdown saving tackle, a gain of 11 for Skyler Seawald, who really came on last week in rifle from the 49-yard line of Platte Valley on the opening drive of the contest. And Maltos this time will hand it off to Seawald, running left towards that sideline near the first down marker as he tries to break out of a tackle at the 40-yard line. Before he's tripped up over there, it's a gain of nine, and Preston Carr made the play, as did Chad Foos. Second down and one from the 40-yard line of Platte Valley. This handoff on the right side, a first down to Isaac Brost, off right tackle inside the 30 to the 28, putting his head down, gaining 12 yards in the play. As the tackle was made by Michael Hoffman, the senior linebacker, at 6'1", 179. And the Bay Diggers are opening up humongous holes tonight on their first drive. From the 28-yard line of Platte Valley. And the handoff again to Seawall, taking it to the outside on the left side of the 20-yard line. And then he's stacked up by several Broncos. But again, it's a big gain of eight yards. And a second and short once again for the Bee Diggers. That's a handoff to Tyler Booth. First down inside the 15. Almost tripped up at the 10 to the 5. Left side line. Touchdown. Tyler Booth from 20 yards away. The Bee Diggers score on the opening drive of the game. And lead 6 to nothing at Bee Digger Stadium. The Bee Diggers and the Maryland die. They'll reshift. Skyler Seawald is the lone setback. Twins off to the right and two receivers off to the left. And motion to the right is Rosenbrock. There's the handoff to Seawald. Breaks a tackle and is into the... 43-yard line as he was tripped up over there by Tate Meckelberg. It's a gain of close to six yards in the play. Second down and four for the Bee Diggers at the 43-yard line of Platte Valley with 5.57 to go in the opening quarter. Brush leads by a score of six to nothing. Two receivers split out to the left and right. Rosenbrock in motion again. He gets the handoff on the end around, trying to find a seam to the outside. Breaks a tackle, tries to drive his way and does to around the 40-yard line. Close to a first down. It's a gain of three. Maltos will hand it off to Seawald. Running left. He's got a first down maybe to the 40-yard line. No, they're going to spot him back at the 40 as he was tripped up. That spot is questionable. He will gain six yards in the play, but he's going to be short by about half a yard. Fourth and one from the Platte Valley 40. The Bee Diggers have not thrown the football tonight. Will they do so here? Maltos hands off. First down, Tyler Booth as he drives his way off left guard to around the 39, maybe the 38-yard line. Didn't get it by much, but from here, Dave, looks like he got the necessary yardage, and we'll give him, boy, just a, a long yard. Let's put it that way. First and 10 from the 39. Maltos on the handoff to Bros, taking it wide towards the left sideline inside the 35 before he's dragged out of bounds at around the 34-yard line. And that might have been Tate Meckelberg again. He's in, or check that, Preston Carr who's been in on quite a few of the plays. Let's see if they give him the 33. And they will. It'll be a gain of six, second down and four. Everything is second and short for Brush so far. Maltos with a long count. We'll hand it off on the inside. And there's a dive all the way down to about the 31. Looked like a little dive to Isaac Brost. And I think his knee might have been down at the 32. They're going to draw him back a yard. So it's only one yard gain for Brost. Third down and a short three for the Bee Diggers. Inside of two minutes to go in the opening quarter. Brush leads six to nothing. Third down and eight to go from the Platte Valley 37. Maltos rolls to his right. Little pressure coming. Still rolling. Throws on the run. That pass is going to be incomplete. A diving attempt at around the 22-yard line, but the ball was thrown out of bounds. Intended over there for Brad Bass. It'll be fourth down. Maltos again with a long count. Is back to throw. Looking to his right. Lofts it down the sideline. Bass is out there. Terrible throw. Well out of bounds. Check that Kukas was out there. First and ten. The back's in an eye. And there's the option right by Maltos. The pitch to Booth taking it towards the sideline at the 40-yard line. Down to the 35. And he breaks out of a tackle inside the 35. Down to around the 33 before he's tripped up on the far sideline. It's a gain of 12 and a brush. Beat digger first down on a perfectly run option by the quarterback Maltos. Maltos to hand it off right up the gut to Isaac Bros. And he bulls his way to around the 30-yard line. It's a gain of three yards, and the tackle was made by one of Platte Valley's big men. 
or big men, Armando Gonzalez, the senior at 6'5", 240. On second down and seven from the Platte Valley 30, the Bee Diggers lead by half a dozen. The backs are split. Maltos on the bootleg left, tries to slip out of a tackle and does not. He's going to be thrown for a one-yard loss. Great penetration by Michael Hoffman, the 6'1", 179-pound senior. The play was sold fairly well. However, Hoffman was out there, and he created all types of trouble, setting up a third and long for Brush. Third down and 13 to go from the 36. Maltos to pass. Here comes the pressure. The pass is complete to Brad. Check that. C.J. Kukas, a first down. He caught that ball behind him inside the 20 to around the 15-yard line. A phenomenal catch by Kukas, a gain of 21 in a Brush B. Digger first down. First and 10, the B. Diggers on that far right hash mark at the 15-yard line of Platte Valley. Looking to extend the lead. They're up 6 nothing. The handoff to Booth right at the middle. 10-5. Touchdown. Booth was not touched until he got into the end zone. It's his second touchdown of the night. And the B-Diggers double their lead. It's 12 to nothing. Jordan Smith in a shotgun will run it right up the middle using a block to get to the 40, maybe the 39. Picks up nearly six yards in the play. Just shy of the 39-yard line. Second down and a long four for Platte Valley. Again, a shotgun. Flotz is in motion to the right. Smith has the snap, looking to throw towards his left. He tosses. That pass is complete inside the 35 to the 30. Knocked out of bounds at around the 27-yard line. It's a gain of close to 12. And Brandon Moore makes the catch as Tyler Booth is the beat digger tackler. Give him 13 on the play. Shotgun from the beat digger, 26. First and 10 for Platte Valley. There's the snap. And the keeper by the quarterback to the 20. And Smith is still on his feet, breaking a tackle towards the left sideline. He's got a first down to around the 15, maybe the 14. The beat diggers could not make the play when they had a chance. The result is a gain of 11. And Platte Valley is looking very efficient on offense after struggling on their first two possessions. First and 10 from the beat digger, 14. Brush does have a 12 nothing advantage, but Platte Valley's threatening. In motion to the left is Zach Dovenbarger. And the throw out in the flat is caught by Brandon Moore. And he's got a short game, but it's a decent short gain as he toes his way across the left sideline to around the 10 before a bevy of beat diggers make the play. Might have actually gotten to the 9. So Brush having trouble figuring out this Platte Valley offense right now. And let's see if they give them as many as six. They'll give them five. No, they give them six all the way to the eight-yard line, second and four. Dovin Barger will reset to the right of the quarterback. Smith on the shotgun, the handoff to Devitt, running off right tackle. And he drives his way to around the six. Arturo Maltos with a penetration. It's a gain of two. Third down and two. Again, Smith on the third and two is in a shotgun. Let's see if he'll take it himself. And it's a high snap. The ball is loose, and Smith is going to be tackled by Rubacaba, but he continues to drive his way towards the five-yard line. Boy, it's amazing that he caught that ball off the deflection off his right hand. Rubacaba got him high, and that allowed Smith to drive to around the five. So he gains just a little bit on the play. It's going to be fourth down and inches to go. Smith is under center. Fourth down and inches to go from the five. Moore's in motion to the right. Will reset. There's the handoff to Moore. Runs into a blocker. I don't know if he's got it. He was hit at the line of scrimmage. Moore ran into a blocker, then into several beat diggers. As Chad Linker was around the football. As was Isaac Brost and the beat diggers with a huge, huge defensive stand. Two receivers off to the right, two to the left. Let's see if they reset, and Adam Sitzman will reset in the backfield. Smith is under center this time. He'll hand it off to Sitzman, running back through the middle, now to the right to the 50-yard line, swings it to the outside, and he's dragged down by Brad Bass at around the 49, but it's a pickup of close to eight yards and a second down. And around six to go for Platte Valley. Same formation with the two receivers off to the left. A shotgun formation. And this time Smith will hand it off to David Devitt running left. He runs into a beat digger who tried to tackle high. And that allowed Devitt to gain two more yards to the 45-yard line. Picking up four yards in the play. Jose Canamar. Made the initial hits, but it's third down and two. Third and two for the Broncos of Platte Valley at the beat digger. 45, 10 12 to go in the third quarter. Brush leads Platte Valley 12-0. Sitzman will reset in the backfield. Under center is Smith. And Smith that time is going to roll to his right. Looking to run. Rubacaba cannot get him. That'll be a first down. Running right towards the middle before Isaac Brose delivered a pop. Along with Joe Rosenbrock. At around the 43-yard line. Picked up the two yards that he needed. And Platte Valley continues on their first drive of the second half. First down and 10. To go for Platte Valley at the beat digger 43 shotgun formation. This time it's the option left and Smith takes off with the football but the beat digger's right there. 
at around the 42 yard line I believe Isaac Brost and Tyler Booth were in on the play they'll give him well we'll give it a couple second down and eight to go for the 41 shotgun formation second down and eight for Platte Valley at the brush 41 yard line and the pass out in the left flat is caught by Moore slips out of a tackle down the left sideline to the 40 and then he's dragged down at around the 39 maybe the 38 as several beat diggers converge to the football including Jose Canamad Joe Rosenbrock and Tyler Booth shotgun formation Smith to hand it off to Moore running to his right swinging it to the outside first down inside the 35 boy he may have run backwards and denied himself that first down it looked like he had it at around the 32 but then dragged down by Bass maybe back towards the 33 right at the stick he picks up six yards but it's going to be extremely close looked like he had it initially day before all of a sudden he started running a little bit laterally to his left with a ball just outside the bead digger 37 shotgun formation for smith man in motion to the left back to throw is smith looking throwing rolling to his left here comes kind over the middle the pass is inter- incomplete almost intercepted by isaac gross it was right in his hands intended over there for sterling zender but it really didn't matter because the bead diggers take over on downs first and ten for platte valley at the brush 47 yard line the bead diggers retain a 12 nothing lead that was the lead at the break jordan smith the quarterback is in a shotgun adam sitzman will reset he'll get the handoff running left to the 45 a seam towards the sideline and he's knocked out of bounds after a hefty gain maybe inside the 40 i think he might have gotten to around the 39 yard line and i'll give him eight yards for clay flot excuse me flot was the ball carrier on the play shotgun for smith and that time he'll keep it himself after faking it to devitt right up the middle it's a gain of four first down for platte valley at the 35 before a bunch of beat diggers converged on the play first and 10 for platte valley at the 34 flot will reset in the backfield and this time there's the handoff to flot and penetration he's thrown for a loss by brad quillen back to around the 38 yard line quillen came through unblocked and it's a humongous loss of around four yards on the play. Second down and 13. That ball's just inside the brush 38. Brandon Moore will reset off the shotgun. There's the handoff to Hoffman right up the middle. Inside the 35. He's dragged down at the 33. And the gain is around four. Brush is leading 12 to nothing with 3.37 to go in the third. Two receivers out to the right. One to the left. Shotgun formation for Platte Valley. In motion to the right is Brandon Moore. And rolling to his right is Jordan Smith. Pressure coming, still coming. He's running out of room, throwing on the run up the sideline. It's caught! And that might be a first down along the sideline to Tate Meckelberg. He's inside the 25-yard line. All the way down to the 21. First and 10 shotgun formation and a big run off the right side by Jordan Smith. He goes from the 21 to around the 13. Before Joe Rosenbrock makes the tackle, but it's a gain of seven for the quarterback, Jordan Smith, and the beat diggers all of a sudden are in trouble. David Devitt to Smith's left. Meckelberg in motion to the right. A high snap, and that time it's received by Smith, but he catches and breaks out of it. A first down as he drags his way inside the 10 to around the eight-yard line. A gain of six. The beat diggers had opportunities. Maltos had to make the play. And boy, that is a tough one there because I thought Brush would have been able to make the play since it was mishandled. But it's a first and goal for Platte Valley. Flotz is in motion to the left. And now Smith, running right, is going to pitch it out to Devitt. And Devitt is down. He slips at around the nine-yard line. He's going to lose yardage. Well, they're going to give him the eight. I mean, he he slipped at the nine and slid to the eight. So, actually, Platte Valley might have gotten a break there. No gain. Brandon Moore will reset in the backfield for Platte Valley. And Smith was nearly tackled there. Back to throw. Rolling to his left. Getting pressured. Wants to throw on the run. Backs up. He's now going to run towards the left sideline. And he swarmed under. At around the 15-yard line, boy, Arturo Maltos ran a long way and made the tackle. Third and goal from the 15. Jordan Smith in a shotgun. Man in motion to the left. And that time, Smith is back to pass into play action. Looking, setting up. He's sacked by Daniel Rubacaba. Back at around the 21-yard line. Outstanding defense by Rubacaba. They'll mark it at the 20, a five-yard loss. It's fourth and goal from the 20. Fourth and goal from the 20. Platte Valley has no option but to go for it. Shotgun formation. Smith back to throw. Setting up no pressure. Throws it deep towards the end zone. That's going to go well out of bounds and over the end line. There is a flag down 
And if it's against Platte Valley, the Bead Diggers will decline it. I believe it is against Platte Valley. And the Bead Diggers have taken over on downs. Here's the official call. It will be a personal foul face mask against Platte Valley. And the Bead Diggers will take over after declining that penalty. Brandon Moore in motion to the right. There is the option right by the quarterback Smith. And he swings it back to the inside in Bead Digger territory across the 45 to around the 42. Very close to a first down. Shotgun formation. Second down and nine from the brush. 43-yard line. Flott is in motion to the left. And there is a reverse. Brandon Moore running to his right with plenty of room to the outside of the 40. Looked like a beat digger was held towards the sideline inside the 30. Down to around the 23-yard line. A big gainer of close to 19 yards for Brandon Moore. And a Platte Valley first down. 5.28 to go. Beat diggers leading 12-0. In the fourth quarter. First and 10 for the digger. 23. There's the toss left to Flott. Swinging it to the outside. Gets a block. He breaks out of a tackle to 20. Inside the 20 to the 16-yard line. Gaining 7 yards on the play before Isaac Brost made the tackle. That beat digger defense might be getting tired. They've been on the field for a while. Platte Valley races up to the line of scrimmage. Second down and three to go from the 16. Back to pass is Smith. No pressure at all. Scattering to his left. Still running now. He'll slip. He will slip it around the 20-yard line. That amounts to a sack. Third down and a long six. Dovenbarger will reset in the backfield. There's the pitch to Dovenbarger. He wants to throw the football. Sets, heaves it down the right sideline. That is out of the end zone. I have no idea what Tate Meckelberg was doing over there. I think he was playing defender so Brad Bass wouldn't pick it off. And yeah. yet it sailed over the end line. Fourth down and six to go from the 19-yard line. Meckelberg is the outside receiver to the right. There's two off to the right, two to the left. The lone setback is Devin. Shotgun formation for Smith. And he'll hand it off to Brandon Moore, swinging it to the outside of the 15-yard line, and he's down right there. Boy, he could have cut back and got the first down, but Arturo Matos forced that play and was able to throw down Moore, a gain of four, and the B-Diggers have dodged another bullet. James in motion to the right, and there's the handoff running right to Seawald. He's got very, very little. A gain of one, second down and nine for Brush. They do have a 12-0 lead with 3-12 to go in the game. Maltos this time to hand it off to Tyler Booth, running left, putting his head down. He breaks a tackle, but not a second. And Platte Valley will call a timeout after he gets to the 20-yard line and picks up around four yards. Brush has one first down in the second half, and Maltos is back to throw. Out to his right, complete. That's a first down, and across the 35-yard line, knocked out of bounds. And that is C.J. Kukas with a catch. An excellent pattern all the way down to around the 39-yard line. And... It's a nice pickup for the bead diggers of 19 yards. 